Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. Michael Noland here and today I wanted to discuss the Rolling Stones and the Beatles. You know, most of you know I never put out uh, a video the very next day after I've already just released one. But this is kind of big news. The Rolling Stones and the Beatles are producing an album. Well, not quite and we're going to discuss that tonight. Now, first of all, uh, Variety, of course, would turn this into a headline. Good Lord. Uh, because when you look at the facts behind it, this so-called Beatles Stones album is probably the album we've been waiting for for a long time by the Stones. Now, there may be a few new tracks they've just recently written added to it, but I think this is the album that we've been expecting for years. And the fact that Paul McCartney shows up one day to play a few bass lines here and there, and Ringo showing up because, you know, Ringo will play on anybody's album under any circumstances. Give my regards to Broad Street, just don't ask me to redo a Beatles song. And you know what, as far as Paul McCartney goes, well, this has become a second kind of profession for him. He'll play and write songs with just about anybody who's willing to write songs with the guy. Now, the Beatles and secondarily, the Rolling Stones were probably the two biggest bands to come out of the 60s. But you know, as John Lennon might say, there's a Spaniard in the works. And who is that Spaniard this time? How about Andrew Watt? All right, so this kind of makes sense, doesn't it? You know, Andrew Watt has received a lot of credit lately for being a great producer, a great musician, but you know what? I see him kind of as the new uh, plastic surgeon to aging rock stars. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean that this guy has a reputation for coming in and making aging rock stars sound more current. I mean, really, I just can't even begin to take anybody seriously who has produced Justin Bieber, not to mention Miley Cyrus, gag me with a freaking spoon. And here's another thing. You know, haven't we seen McCartney do this same thing back in the late 90s, early uh, 2000? Uh, I mean, he put out an entire album, an overrated album, I might say, Chaos and Creation in the Backyard, some great tracks on that album, but a lot of freaking filler. And he was known to go out and get producers to produce individual tracks for that freaking album. And he did it in the late 80s as well, uh, working with people, and it's always got him in trouble. Now he has stated he doesn't have anything in the works right now, but he has been playing with a couple of people and he's interested in working with this Andrew Watts. And you know what? This is where McCartney gets into trouble every single time. First of all, Paul McCartney is a great producer all on his own. And his constant need to update his image baffles me. Now, I've said it before on this channel. I would rather see McCartney just use the voice that he has, write new material, keep putting out albums and tour them. But I'm not going to get my way. Uh, McCartney, even if he wanted to do that, his fans won't let him. Any more than the fans who go to see the Stones these days or him in concert. They just want to hear the hits. They've turned him and he has willingly participated in becoming a human jukebox. You know, folks, Every single time I open my eyes these days, it seems like I'm reading another headline on the destruction of classic rock. And you know what? This is just more of the same crap, if you ask me. Elton John working with this guy. Now McCartney of the Stones, Ringo Starr, and many, many others. I don't know. It sounds like denial on the part of all of these so-called artists. McCartney should be totally untouchable. Now, having said all of that, uh, I can't go too hard on McCartney here. He's been one of those kind of artists that have shown up on side projects, well, since the very beginning. He showed up on Donovan's album, not to mention Steve Miller's album, 
And he's done this all along. But there's something about when a beetle meets a stone. I don't know. It seems to me you got to be a bit careful here. You know what? I think we're witnessing the last hurrah of rock and roll, if you ask me. And here's my reasoning behind that. You know, it's the very audiences that are demanding perfection. Some of these clowns out there are saying, we use backing tracks because well, the audience demands it. Since when did the average rock audience demand backing tracks and lip syncing? It kind of tells you where the money is, doesn't it? All right, a very quick video today, folks, but I had to get this out. Damn you, Variety, for catching me on my day off and get off my freaking lawn. All right, folks, that's the video. Quick one, obviously, but if you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. That helps the YouTube algorithm better identify the channel. I'm Michael Noland. And of course, this is the bottom line as I see it. And together, you and I, folks, we are the tribe. And I will see you in my next video.